Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the 8th Orthodontic Lab for Class 4 Student College of Dentistry, Mosul University. Today we will talk about the construction of a new spring that mostly used for retention of removable orthodontic appliance and widely used, which is called Adam's clasp or arrowhead clasp. It's the most commonly used clasp to provide retention for removable appliance. It's constructed from 0.7 mm stainless steel wire and used mainly on the permanent first molar, but can be used for any other tooth. Component of this spring, it's mainly composed of two parts, active parts and retentive parts. The active parts represented by number one, arrowheads, two arrowheads, U-shape, engage the mesial and distal undercuts. The bridge, which is a horizontal piece of wire, join both arrowheads. And lastly, the tags, which represent the extension of the arrowheads that crosses the occlusal surface. So the active part, arrowheads, bridge, tags. The second component is the retentive arm. Now we will start to construct the spring. We cut a piece of wire. First, we draw the design on the uh, tool. We start our work by drawing the design on the tooth. We draw vertical lines from the tips of mesiobuccal and distobuccal cusp. Then we join these two lines by transverse line that will represent the bridge. This line located at the middle third of the crown. First we start with a 90 degree bend. We mark the second point. Make the second bend. Now we construct the bridge. Okay. Now we need to make 
the arrowheads at the mesial and distal side. Before we start to make the U-shape arrowheads, it's better to carve the cast at the mesial and distal side of the crown about one millimeter to enable the well engaging of the arrowheads at the mesial and distal sides. Now, after we carve this area and this, we mark the point and start to make the mesial arrowhead. This is about one millimeter, so we make it by the end of the round beak of the player, the tip of the round beak of the player should not be wider okay we ensure the bridge in correct position the arrowhead reaches the gingival margin now we start to mark the point for the distal arrowhead okay now we always check our work now, it's important to make a bend in both the mesial and distal arrowhead about 45 degree to the bridge, 45 degree to the bridge. This will enable the U-shape uh, arrowheads to engage well at the mesial and distal undercut. So, you hold the wire such a way and you start to make the 45 degree. We see that the arrowhead start to engage the mesial side better than it's before. Now we see the both arrowheads engaged well in the undercuts now this wire we mark point at the level of the bridge mark point at the level of the bridge to start the first bend this bend will direct the wire to the occlusal surface. Other side also. We mark point at the level of bridge. We need to increase the bend more, about 70 or 70, between 70 to 90 degree. This bend is not necessary just for making the wire adapt to the occlusal surface but also to make the bridge far from the uh, uh, labial surface about or buccal surface about two millimeter. So we need to increase this bend. Okay, we see the bridge start to 
Now, we finish the first bend. We see the bridge become far from the buckle surface, about two millimeter. Now we start to mark the second bend. The second bend, which enable the extension of the wire to move occlusally at the pressure area between the, the second premolar and the first molar. We need to increase the bend more. Okay. Make the other side in the same manner. The wire should move at the cruiser surface without interference of the opposing arch. This wire should be covered. Now we start to make the bend that move the wire palatally. The retentive arm will extend for about 10 millimeter on the palatal surface. Okay, now we finish the construction of the spring. We put it on the tooth and check the following. The arrowheads, the arrowheads should engage the undercuts at both sides. Mesia and the stall, the arrowheads should engage the undercut. The bridge should be about two millimeter away from the buccal surface, not touched, should be about two millimeter away. And there should be no occlusal interference with the opposite arch. Thank you.